So our, we have a brand new Teletype that showed up. The lower case only for the home. It needs serious repainting. You can see the original nice black paint and the, the horrible, probably leaded gray paint. I finally have found a, a metal refinisher, uh, so I'm going to take the teletype apart and uh, make it all new, hopefully. And our next difficulty is going to dismount this thing because the harness is soldered in soldered in there is just no way to take this apart and uh, get the base for refinish without completely taking the wiring out and Carl was pointing that we have the same an even bigger problem down here because we'll have to take all that out to refinish the desk and this is all all wired through holes so we have to unsolder everything so we were just wondering why there's so much wiring at the back of this thing and there's hundreds of wires what do they do it's a serial five bit machine is incomprehensible. So here's our beautiful transmitter deconstructed and all this because I was so annoying I wanted this to be repowder re coated so it looks good <laughs> against the better advice of everybody else but this way we can really clean it so this is the tape reader the motor, the rotary assembly, relay, all beautiful parts, and a resistor uh, that had known better days. So I, I couldn't participate to the work today, but Cal and Ken did the hell of a fantastic work getting the table back to stripped. And As you can see, the wires are all color coded. They are? Well, once you wash them, they are. <laughs> Cal promises he can put every wire back together where it belongs. I think I promised that there's a schematic with every connection. <laughs> we first made sure we had the schematics and we understood them before we took the wires away <laughs> because it's actually way more complicated than this than is a desk. you'd think. I, I will tell you, this is a schematic of a desk. Right, this is the schematic of the table here and all those cables. There's nothing to do with the teletype. Right, right. So the, the teletype is actually very well done and very modular and super thought through. And the table is just a mishmash of wires that you know you have to take them all out just to remove the parts. It's just so, awful. So, so my, my favorite part of the desk is this oh, yeah. crazy complicated switch. So three position switch that we're still trying to figure out what it's doing. Um, this is its symbol on the schematic. Yeah, you can see it right there. So attach it to the two lines, line one or line two. For the re-perforator, which we don't have yet. Okay, all right, so we'll put all this in the car and actually all the metal parts in the car and drive it to the refinisher to be stripped and painted. So we have the, the, the full crowd here and we have even Ed that joined us from the Computer History Museum because we put out all of our Model 15 base teletypes so that's uh, 15 that's what came on my 19 with the table which is at the tables at painting right now and uh, that happens often when when I buy something and it's nice, Carl buys one and vice versa. So Carl got new from eBay 
Uh, you you had to, you had to haul it in, right? You yeah, went to to get it in LA. Pick it up. And I, yeah, no, ninety nine dollars. So yeah, cool. man, and, and it's it's super pretty. Simple green is out. It's going to be a cleaning session, I guess. So cleaning is a pretty boring and tedious job. Uh, let me show you what we use. Uh, simple green is always a good one. There are some people that dunk the whole thing, except the electrical part, like a motor, into simple green, and it will. Uh, no degrease the stuff and get it freed and make it clean. Uh, I tend to go over uh, the piece by hand uh, with cotton swabs or that's been my most used tool today, <laughs> a toothbrush uh, to get into all the wires and stuff. Uh, and then on the metallic part when they are lightly corroded uh, I like to use you no know, metal stuff uh, used for car uh, mothers work well, works well. Um, bombs away for uh, aluminum, and of course, uh, you know, the more things you take apart, uh, the better you can clean them. And on, on mostly mechanical machines, uh, you no know, cleaning is the name of the game. If they move as they are supposed to, uh, then all you have to do is adjustments. Uh, so I tend to take as m part as much as I can. All right, there's just no substitute to unmounting the parts and polishing them one by one. There's just no way to a bath in no simple green will ever remove that amount of crut. And you need to repolish the metal as much as you can. Remove all that bad stuff on it. And this used to be like this. And all those parts are visible on the keyboard. So the more effort you put, the better it's gonna look. There we go, much better. So it has all been cosmetic so far, uh, it's getting a lot cleaner, but here I'm hitting my first functional repair where the the contacts are right here. Boop. And some of them are super sluggish. So I'll need to uh, exercise them and I don't I don't think it's worth taking the whole thing off because they still move. So I think just oiling and exercising would be better and I'm going to clean the contacts in there probably with alcohol see if I can put yeah I can put this in yeah there you go Ooh. okay so I'm going to do that with every contact and put a little bit of contact formula on it so I think I can get away with a partial disassembly here. So I don't have to take this completely away. I was able to get to the contacts, clean them. And uh, I can clean this. And I can wiggle this one. It's better now. They, they used to drag when I turned this, but they don't anymore. So I'll uh, just for the sake of it, I'll put a little bit of oil, clock oil, that's, that's much better now, okay, not sluggish at all anymore, okay, I need to clean those contacts too and there's some back there, uh, I like this little thing, so steampunk. Okay, that might be too light an oil to fill in here. I, it goes and oil all this. I'll put some little heavier oil. Okay. That's uh, nano oil for what it's worth. Nobody knows if it really works. It's not worse than a uh, good oil. So encoder seems to work fine now.
So there is more electrical trickery than you'd think in those things. Yeah. Look at that. So we think that's an optional motor relay because um, this machine, which we call Bob Erickson, because the late Bob Erickson uh, worked on it before I got it. It has nothing. And there is some stuff happening down here. I have two large resistors, some wires going on. And you, Carl, you have flat resistors. You're a flat earther. Yeah, in, in addition to the big one that you The big one, so that you can... So pull them out, there's two of them. You can pull them out? Yes. So the, this is, look at that resistor. So they just go in. Well, I'm assuming that they're resistors. That's but they're not connected to nothing, there. or they are optional. I, I think they're connected in the socket here. There's. And, and oh yeah, I think you're. Right. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out eventually. So uh, finally, uh, figure out what this is. This is actually an optional feature for relay receive, where there's a sensitive relay amplifier before it goes to the magnet selector. Uh, unfortunately, the relay is not there. And then there's a whole bunch of wires coming in. There is a power block, there is a receive block, and there is a transmit block, uh, which you can configure out different ways, whether you uh, have the receive in series with the transmit, and whether you use the relay receive or polar or non-polar. So we figured out what the uh, what these resistors finally are. Um, they are a military modification, and they were made for fill units uh, where you would adjust the current in the line by putting those resistors in series. Uh, actually, you you wire them up uh, using the block over here, uh, and if you need it, so you can wire one of the resistor or the second one down there. And if you needed intermediate values, then you could short those. Uh, and you can create a whole bunch of values that have always the same current needed in the line. So we have two different motors. That's the synchronous, that's the easy one. And the Bob Erickson machine has a governor. One where the, there's a speed regulator, so you can go in different countries with different AC, and it will always be the right speed. And here's the receptacle that goes with that weird old plug. Okay, so we'll we'll wire one permanently and see if that works. Go, we put it in a box, and we have teletype power, like in the 1940s. All right, save to the type of power. Oh. Okay, maybe my switch was on. Yes. Oh! -ho! oh. So we read, we read the scene correctly. It's just the village schematics that yes. uh, <laughs> these things go back on itself. It's just one, one was switch and the other wasn't. Good. It smells like what you want to try your, on yours? Yeah, absolutely. These are so strong. Okay, we made the motor and a switch work. Yes. That's the, the restoration's ach almost That's nice. the achievement of the day. Yes. It's called spray, yeah, that's right in the sun. Spray, California spray, something like that. Wow, that's pretty good. Wow. We should take it like this. Not put anything on it. 
I mean, a powder core itself will either form a completely flat, mirror-like surface or right. whatever, depending on what you put on it. Well, this is a this is much better than I thought. Super clean. Not a trace of rust anywhere. So, but that, that, that's, that would actually be closer to the original, but we decided to go one step more refined because the the finish is so good, the metal is. Alright, so Mickey 19 it is. Alright. This Mickey 19. 